Well, hey there, top of the morning to you. Welcome back to the fish cave. Today, we're going green. We're gonna be talking about some easy to grow plant species that I keep here in the fish cave and I've had success with, and I wanna share with you because I think that you'll have success with them as well. I don't have CO2 on any of my tanks. I don't have special lighting and I don't dose any kind of crazy fertilizer, although I do use some, and I don't spend a bunch of money on substrate. So all these plants should work well for you, even if you're running on a budget setup just like me. Everyone wants a carpeting plant in their aquarium. Maybe not everyone, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want one, but I sure as heck do. And the plant that I found that gives me the best carpet for very low light and not high tech aquarium is gonna be Dwarf Sagittarius or Dwarf Sag. Dwarf Sag is one of the first plants I ever got and to this day it's my favorite carpeting plant because I've had a lot of success with it and it's very low maintenance. In some of my tanks it's really taken over and I pretty much have almost a true carpet and other ones you can see it kind of spreading out and in due time it will you know become a nice carpet. Now keep in mind even with this plant with any carpet you know patience is key and plants take time to grow but in my opinion if you're looking for a nice carpeting plant and you don't have CO2, you don't have high light, you necessarily don't have the greatest uh, substrate, Dwarf Sag is gonna be perfect for you. It's primarily a root feeder, so you're gonna wanna stick it in the ground. And like I said, if you don't have really good substrate, you wanna get some potting soil. You can't get away with it in just some plain gravel or some sand. You may, but you're gonna have a lot better success if you at least go with some potting soil or if you have you know, a substrate that's, that's good. Um, but you know, with this dwarf sag, it is a root feeder, so you're gonna need a little more than just your basic gravel or sand for it to really kind of nice and carpet out. The next plant I wanna talk to you guys about doesn't care about the substrate at all, and that's because it's a rhizome plant. And rhizome plants essentially have a nice thick vertical root essentially that needs to stay above the, uh, the substrate. Usually they get planted onto wood or rocks. And the one I wanna talk to you guys about today is Anubius. Anubius or Anubis, is uh, one of the, actually the, the first plant I ever bought. Um, I put it in a 29 gallon tank and it's a slow grower, but it's very hardy. Typically plants that are slow, slow growers are also slow to die. So we'll get to some plants later on that are still easy to keep, but may die off quickly. Whereas Anubius is gonna give you some time. You're not gonna wake up one morning and find that your Anubius died. It's gonna give you plenty of warning signs. There's a ton of different species of Anubius. Some are more rare than others, uh, but there's plenty of cheaper and easy to find varieties of Anubius, uh, like Anubius nana, uh, Anubius coffifolia, get some nice kind of um, you know wrinkliness to it, for lack of a better word. To this day, Anubius is one of my favorite plants because when you see a nice, big, thick, healthy piece of Anubius, you know that that's been growing for a while and it takes time because there's really no super shortcut to get there. Um, so Anubius is definitely one of my favorite, very easy to grow plants. You just wanna make sure you keep that rhizome above the substrate and it'll grow right on a rock or a, um, a piece of wood or just sitting on the substrate. Just like how everyone wants that nice carpet, I think most people also want a red plant. And if you do a little research, you'll know that most beginner plants are green. And when you want to get into those red plants, you're looking at some more high light. Well, I got a plant for you that's red and I keep, so that means it doesn't need high light. And that is the dwarf aquarium lily. Now there's also a, a tiger lily as well, but this is a bulb plant that kind of like a rhizome plant needs to stay uh, a little bit, at least a little bit above the substrate. This one, you don't want to attach to a, a driftwood or a rock. You want to kind of bury that bulb halfway and sometimes you may just buy the bowl but if you give it some time it'll sprout a nice really cool plant it'll have some kind of lower hanging nice thick fat leaves and it'll shoot some lily pads up to the top when it gets happy and if you can really make it happy it may even flower for you so if you're looking for some color in your tank other than green but you don't want to spend some money on some really highlights or really crazy substrate or co2 then take a look at the dwarf aquarium lily and a tiger lotus next i want to talk to you guys about some stem plants now these are the kind of plants you can get them in the store. Sometimes they'll come in bunches. Um, they kind of, they, they grow straight up. And in order to propagate them or make more of them, you usually clip them and you kind of stick it back in the substrate. So kind of like a, uh, the opposite of a Nubius, these grow quick, but can also die quickly. So if you get them going, they'll propagate and they'll grow really nicely for you. And they're gonna want, like I said, they don't need crazy good substrate, but they're gonna definitely feed off that substrate like the Dwarf Sag. So definitely invest in some potting soil or at least a little something more than just some gravel or plain pool filter sand. Now, specific species of stem plants that I keep and I like that I found are a little more easy 
is going to be your Bacopa. There's a standard kind of, they call it a lemon Bacopa. And there's also some Sunset Hygrophilia. Now, Sunset Hygrophilia, um, you may find it needs a little more, like the medium light or so. Um, but I've had some success with it in this, you know, low to moderate light with, once again, just some potting soil and nothing too special. So if you're looking at some stem plants, like I said, they grow quickly when they get going. But if something's going wrong, they will, they'll die back quickly, quickly as well. Um, you want to make sure before you stick them in your substrate, look for some roots. Kind of get some roots growing. If you buy them and they don't have roots already, float them in the water kind of close to the light till you see some roots going, then stick them in the substrate. How about a fast-growing plant that doesn't need substrate to grow? Guppy grass, also called Nahas or Naha grass. It's been a plant that's done fantastically well for me. Not only is it a pretty fast-growing plant, it's, uh, it's really good for breeding fish. It's called guppy grass for a reason because it kind of uh, provides a lot of hides for guppy fry or any other newborn fry for that matter. So you'll see a lot of uh, breeders will keep this in a bunch of their tanks, whether they're breeding guppies, other live bearers, or just other fish in general because it's going to provide a lot of coverage and just, you know, surface area for um, little organisms and just, you know, the fry to kind of comb through. Just like when you're stocking your fish in your aquarium, you want to be aware of different plants and different levels of the aquarium. So we talked about some, you know, root feeders. We talked about ones you kind of stick on driftwood or rocks, mid-level. Well, there's also floaters. And there's some floaters that are gonna need some high light. Well, I found some that have worked for me in my low to moderate light conditions. And the two that I wanna share with you today are dwarf water lettuce and frog bit. Um, I especially like the way that the dwarf water lettuce forms and kind of looks on the top. And I really love the kind of nice long roots that the frog bit gets um, in the aquarium and it kind of provides a lot of coverage and hides and it's just, you know, they're cool looking. So in my opinion, I think um, a nice planted tank, you should definitely look to get some floaters and frog bit and dwarf water lettuce are two of my favorites and two that have done well for me. This next plant I want to share with you guys, maybe my favorite family of plants and that's cryptocorns. I keep a few different types of crypts. There's probably dozens if not hundreds of different varieties, um, but we're going to talk about some of the easier ones, the basic ones. And the good news is, even with some of these basic crypts, you can get some really cool looking plants that have some different colors. Um, there's a Crip Wendetai that's kind of, um, it's got this um, you know, red or brownish color. Sometimes it comes in a green or a brown. Um, it could be sold as Wendetai green, Wendetai brown. You know, I found that that's kind of interchangeable. But when you get them in your aquarium, um, you're gonna get more than just like a, you know, a, a straight green. In my, in my experience, you, you know, you get some of those, those browns in different tones. And it's just a really cool, once again, a, a root feeding plant. So you don't need any crazy special substrate, but you're gonna wanna at least get some potting soil and you can branch out from there. Another crypt I keep is a uh, crypt parva. And this one's a little more highlight and you know a little more care, but there's some of the rare crypts like a, a pink flamingo. But the cryptocorn family as a whole, there's plenty of beginner crypts that you can get into and I think do very well in a low light uh, scenario with no CO2 and no special fertilizers. Um, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I don't use a ton of fertilizers. I use Aquarium Co-op's Easy Green. I don't dose it religiously. I should get more on it, but I, I pop in, you know, once a week, once every other week with it. And I think it does provide, you know, some benefit, but with these plants, you're not going to need some crazy, ridiculous fertilization schedule, although that will help. My favorite place to pick up plants by far is locally. And I'm talking about from other hobbyists, whether it be, you know, Craigslist, Offer Up, Let Go. Now, the only downside with that is your selection is limited. If for some reason you can't find the plants that you're looking for, because, you know, a hobbyist isn't going to order in plants for you, or they're not going to stock a bunch of plants, they're just going to sell you what they have extras of, which is good because if they're growing them in your local tap water, um, then you should be able to grow them in your local tap water also. But if for some reason you can't find someone locally, I recommend buying from Aquarium Co-op. You know, full disclosure, this video is not sponsored in any way, but I am an Aquarium Co-op affiliate, so I'll drop a link down below. And if you uh, buy through that link, it does help out the channel. All in all, I contribute plants to my success as a hobbyist. When I was first getting going, just like many of you guys, you get a fish tank, you, the parameters are out of whack, you're killing fish, you don't know. In my opinion, these plants have really kind of allowed me to feel more comfortable. You know, they're, they suck up nitrates, they really help kind of establish a tank. And I feel like if I didn't find live plants, 
you wouldn't be seeing me here. If I just had tanks with no plants, you know, I wouldn't be as successful as I am. Not that I'm the, the you know, most successful fish keeper by any means, but I would be far less successful if I did not have live plants. I hope some of this information was useful. If you want to check out some more fish gate videos, there'll be some right there. I'm also going to drop a link in the comments down below to my video where I talk about my top five things to do when you're keeping plants. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching, especially to the end. Stay positive, stay passionate and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, wrinkliness to it, for lack of a better word, like crinkles, almost like a, a crinkle cut Pringle. Back in at heart. But uh, 